I had stalled out a little bit on my game controller project, uh, mostly because um, cutting these USB holes on the top um, with the bamboo horizontally aligned, it was splitting the wood really bad and so I needed to uh, take special care and also chop them at exactly the right spot so that the breadboard uh, would fit uh, in a particular place especially with the defender board um, there was a very narrow spot that I could actually fit uh, the little breadboard in uh, but now everything's fastened and I just need to print out uh, the color covers um, to make them look exactly like I wanted them to. So I uh, should be able to finish those up this week. And so print it and laminate it uh, and place them under the controllers like they should. Uh, I think they turned out really nice. So the first game to demonstrate is Defender. Um, being able to play with the original controls is much better than being able to play uh, with a modern game controller. Just gives you a much more authentic experience. The second game to demonstrate is actually the onus of this whole project. Crazy Climber can be played with a modern game controller because the controller has two thumbsticks. However, the feel of crawling up the side of a building with your thumbs is much less authentic than having two full hand controllers climbing up the side of the building and holding on as flower pots and other obstacles fall on your head. This retro game controller was so much closer to the original experience. The only thing I needed to add to this particular controller was the LERFs. A LERF is the technical term for the little rubber feet on the bottom of equipment. The next game to demonstrate is a game called Kicks. Again, there were intuitive flaws on how this game works when using a game controller not specifically designed for the game. In this game, you use the joystick, which is intuitive enough, but there's a blue fast draw button and a red slow draw button that just don't work well if your game controller is just A, B, X, and Y buttons. To draw a blue box, you use the blue button, and to draw a red box, you use the red button. It makes so much more sense. And the last game to demonstrate is Space Invaders. The only thing really unique about the Space Invaders console is that it didn't have a joystick. The original game had a move left and move right button, as well as a fire button. It's a very different game experience. The whole lesson that I will be using these game controllers for is a video game history lesson that I do with my capstone or advanced computer science students. I have lots of games, old and new, loaded onto computers that during the class uh, the students get to play, and then during the next class period we can have a conversation about what makes a good game and what makes a bad game. In the past there was too much focus on the awful controls, and I'm hoping that these retro controls will help them see more of the game experience rather than the experience of playing a game not designed for a modern controller.
this week in my freshman computer science class called Foundations of Computer Science, my students again were working on their Lego robots. This is the point in the projects where the creativity really starts to shine. This week, our bank moved from MasterCard to Visa for their debit cards, and so we needed to get new cards to the kids. On Wednesday, that meant that Melissa got to go up to Idaho Springs to have breakfast with Alex so that he could continue to, you know, buy things for himself. Well, I'm super excited to tell you about the book I read this week. It is called The Small and the Mighty, 12 Unsung Heroes Who Changed the Course of History from the Founding to the Civil Rights Movement by Sharon McMahon. And Sharon is one of my favorite follows on Instagram. I feel like I learn a lot about how our country works and I get some nonpartisan news from her and just a lot of joy. Um, and she's a teacher, so that really feels good to learn from someone that knows how to teach. I read this book pretty quickly, um, despite the fact that it is nonfiction and it's history. Um, I, she's got a fun writing style that makes it a lot of um, fun to read. A couple of the names of the Aung San heroes are ones that I knew, but there's a lot I didn't know about them. And um, some of them, like Clara Brown, um, who's the Angel of the Rockies, just made me so happy to think of somebody who um, made a difference in my neighborhood not that long ago. Okay, a couple hundred years ago. Anyway, I, um, I highly recommend this book. I recommend it to anybody, um, whether you love to read nonfiction or not, because the stories are really uplifting, remind us that people everywhere can make a difference, and um, you just never know what you're doing that might affect someone else, who might affect our country. You don't have to be the president. You don't have to be an elected official to make a difference. Um, and that we can all go make a difference. So I love this book and its message, and I feel really inspired. On Thursday night, I again got the opportunity to join the teacher team for the DC Improv Show called DC Live. Baby African zebras might. <laughs> <laughs> 
cats, dogs, elephants, frogs. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go with the frogs. Gotta go with the frogs. Hate frogs. <laughs> hate frogs. Frogs. Frogs are the best. Jumping frogs. Missing frogs. <laughs> <laughs> My frogs are lazy. No frogs are lazy. <laughs> Only the kissing frogs. Perhaps. <laughs> we'll get the frogs. Okay. Uh, let's move on to. Oh yeah, rabbits. Rabbits do sometimes. <laughs> Oh, okay. 
glad I thought nothing weird would happen today. <laughs> And then on Saturday, it was back to the press box for a marching competition, this time at D.C. for the Douglas County Marching Invitational. Here are some short clips of the shows. I have to keep them short for fair use compliance. I wasn't the only one to notice. Many of the judges were talking later about the sunset. Above the left 45 is the sliver of the moon, and above the 50, the evening star, aka Venus, was very bright today. The whole DC campus is used for the DCMI show. Stuck in the booth, all I could really catch was the color guards warming up in the field between the two buildings. <laughs> 